Suppose two waves of equal amplitude, wavelength, speed, and frequency were to move in opposite directions along the same string. How would the string move? The displacements of the two waves add and result in what is known as a standing wave. The wave does not appear to go anywhere, but simply oscillates up and down. Notice that some points experience no motion at all. These stationary points are called nodes. Other regions undergo maximal motion. These are called antinodes. Even though they seem to go nowhere, standing waves nonetheless have wavelengths, periods, frequencies, and even wave speeds or velocities. If we freeze the wave for a moment, it is easy to see that even in a standing wave, the wavelength is still the distance from crest to crest, trough to trough, or from any point in the wave to the next equivalent point. Notice that the distance from node to node, or from antinode to antinode, is half a wavelength. The distance from a node to the closest antinode is a quarter wavelength. The period is still the time to complete one complete cycle and the frequency is still the number of cycles in a given time. The wave velocity of a standing wave is still defined as wavelength times frequency, even though the wave is not going anywhere. When a string is fixed at both ends, standing waves can be set up on the string by moving a portion of the string with simple harmonic motion of small amplitude. For certain frequencies of that motion, called resonance frequencies, characteristic vibration patterns called normal modes can be produced. Since the wave speed in the string V depends only on the tension in the string and the mass per unit length of the string, each resonant frequency F is related to the wavelength lambda of the stationary pattern set on the string by the relation F equals V divided by lambda. The lowest resonance of the string is called the fundamental mode, or first harmonic. The fundamental mode has one antinode in the center of the length of string. This mode occurs when the wavelength lambda is equal to twice the length of the string, written lambda 1 equals 2L. The next lowest normal mode of the string is the second harmonic which has two antinodes and one node in the middle of the string in addition to those at both ends of the strings. The wavelength associated with that case, lambda 2, equals L. The third harmonic has three antinodes and two nodes. Accordingly, the wavelength is two-thirds of the length of the string, which is written lambda 3 equals two-thirds L. This pattern is repeated for higher harmonics. The general formula for normal modes of a string of length L is lambda sub n equals 2L divided by n, where n equals a positive integer and refers to the nth mode of vibration. This result is known as the standing wave condition. The frequency of the nth harmonic is given by F sub n is equal to V divided by lambda sub n, which is equal to V times n divided by 2L, where the wave speed V is the same for all frequencies. Which of these standing waves has a wavelength lambda equal to L, the length of the string? Incorrect. Try again. Correct. The middle wave has two half wavelengths and thus one full wavelength on the string. Standing waves can also be set up on a string that is fixed only at one end. In that case, the free end is an antinode and the standing wave condition must be modified. The fundamental mode or first harmonic of a string, fixed at one end and free at the other, is produced when the wavelength lambda is equal to 4 times the length of the string, written lambda 1 equals 4L. The next harmonic corresponds to 4 thirds of the length of the string, 
which is written lambda 3 equals the product of 4 thirds and L, and so on. The standing wave condition for a string fixed at one end only can be written lambda sub n equals 4L divided by n, where n is an odd positive integer, 1, 3, 5, and so on. Note that the even harmonics are missing because the free end is an antinode. Consequently, the resonant frequencies are given by F sub n is equal to V divided by lambda sub n, which is equal to the product of V and n divided by 4L, where again n is an odd positive integer, 1, 3, 5, and so on. The effects of large amplitude standing waves can be devastating. On November 7, 1940, strong turbulent winds resulted in standing waves being established along the Tacoma Narrow Suspension Bridge. Ultimately, developed wind forces linked to structural motion resulted in the collapse of the bridge just four months after.